Serious, have you ever been disturbed by an aspect of your character revealed by a stressful or threatening situation? When in stressful situations, I tend to do the thing that will get me out of it the fastest, with no regard for future consequences. Makes me freaking terrified of being an adult. Around week 22 of my wife's second pregnancy, they told us that there were some soft marker indicators for Down syndrome. I stopped referring to him by his name, and would generally change the subject any time my wife said things like, whatever happens, we will get through this, all I wanted to do was run. I was honestly thinking things like, I wonder if I take off with the firstborn kid if they'll make me give her up. It sucked. Thank goodness we only had to wait a week for 99% test that revealed no extra chromosomes, and the kid was obviously born healthy. Still, I can't shake the fact that when presented with the threat of a dance baby, my overwhelming thoughts were to dehumanize the kid and to flee. A friend considered fleeing her family after a difficult birth and starting life over in another city. The desire to flee is not uncommon. Before I had a kid, I used to think that anyone who would shake a baby is a monster. Now, I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often. I am probably one of the calmest, most patient people I know, but there is something about the persistent screams of a newborn that raises your blood pressure, and leads to a surprising amount of anger. That's why new parents should never feel guilty for putting the baby down in a safe place, or handing him her over to someone else. All it takes is one minute for an otherwise loving albeit sleep deprived parent to do something they regret. I hate the sound of a crying baby, it makes me feel angry. Between that and the sleep deprivation and the stress of caring for a baby I can see how it could happen. I think people need to recognize when they get too close to losing their temper. It's better to put the baby in its crib and go and calm yourself down. Also earplugs or headphones. I shut down alarmingly fast when things get bad. I remember doing it as a kid. I'll just put my forehead against the wall and block it all out. I had a strict upbringing. So every failed exam was a family blowout. Every minor step out of line had your things being thrown out the window as punishment. Academic things were the worst. I was a good student but just not good enough to stop it. Even now, if something goes wrong, badly wrong, I just sort of switch off. I can go on autopilot for days and just sort of keep it inside. If I never mention it, I never have to deal with letting people down. That's the deal I have with myself. I didn't realize how deep this went until I recently got some bad academic news when alone and my automatic reaction took me to the nearest wall where I put my head against it and closed my eyes. I stayed there for nearly 10 minutes before I realized what I was doing. I tend to freeze up in frightening situations. That's not a very good thing to do when you hit a barbecue that has fallen off the truck in front of you on the freeway at 11 at night. I was walking my dog. My dog is a tiny little thing. Maybe 14 pounds. A corky, chihuahua yorkie mix. And I love that ugly little thing more than you can possibly imagine. It was probably around 1am and I had just gotten off work. The dog needed to be walked. I had been gone around 9 hours. We'd go for a stroll and a regular sized dog in someone else's yard started barking and snarling. I thought he was tethered. So I just kept walking. It was dark and hard to see. The dog runs up and just tries to attack my dog. Now, small as my dog is, she has attitude. And when that dog came near she was like frick you be get the frick oh. And the bigger dog grabbed poor Nina and just started trying to chew her throat out. I blacked out. I want you to understand that I was 27, 29 now, and was so unbelievably stressed out from work, over money, over everything. I just wasn't feeling well. When that bastard dog latched onto my Nina, I do not freaking remember much past that point. But I must have kicked the dog a few times. And when I came to the dog was against a wooden fence about 10 feet away, cowering. And I was just kicking the ever loving heck out of it. It was whimpering and just kind of laying there curled up. I took a step back and the dog ran away. I guess he was alright. That scared the frick out of me. I have never been a violent person. Ever. I've never hurt an animal in my life. But in that moment I realized that actually blacking out in a rage is a real thing. And something I'm apparently capable of. I honestly feel pretty bad. Because the dog was. 
probably Strayle had been abused before and I just exacerbated it, but at the same time, I love my dog more than your dog, so that's just the way it had to be, I suppose. If I saw a pet of mine getting killed by something I'd probably do the same. I realized I can completely shut off my emotions when I had a run of bad events in my teens. At first I assumed it was just a late reaction, but after a while I began to notice distinct characteristics to the other personality. Basically if things go bad something in my brain says this is a horrific world and you don't get by unless you're just as horrific yourself and I just turn to stone. I can only assume the complete absence of emotions I feel then is something like being temporarily insane. It scares me to think that could take over completely in the wrong circumstances. It took me getting my butt handed to me by pre-med to acknowledge that I am a lazy, entitled, narcissist. That was a pretty fun realization to come to. So my husband bought a gun. I wasn't totally cool with it but whatever. Pick your battles. So one morning I wake up and he is loading it and putting it in the drawer next to our bed. I couldn't get it off my mind all day that there was a loaded gun just sitting there. After a whole day stewing over it I told him he needed to either keep the gun unloaded with the ammo hidden from me or get a safe that only he knows the code to. Our conversation went like this. Him. Are you gonna get pee off and shoot me or something? Me. No I'm gonna get pee off and shoot myself. We have a safe now. Yeah, I get super uncomfortable by the thought of a loaded gun in a drawer. I've never been suicidal, but there's just something so dang eerie about the fact that you can own a device that has a button on it that can end your existence. It's the same feeling of looking over a tall ledge and thinking wow, if I just leaned a little further, shudder. You know the scene in the Avengers when Bruce Banner the Hulk says his secret is that he's always angry? That's me. My last job was stressful in a lot of ways, and the work environment was psychologically damaging. My experience there led to some awful self-realizations. I'm not the kind, helpful, caring person I thought I was or want to be. Some of the first glimmers of the less than ideal aspects of my personality led me to seek therapy. I was so disturbed by the level of anger and hatred and disdain I felt, and still feel, towards certain people. I was a very angry person with a thin veneer of social niceties on top. It still bothers me just how angry I am deep down about a lot of things. Me too. Just thought it'd make you feel better to know you're not alone. I'm normally a really calm person and I really don't like hitting people. I've been hit quite a bit over the years by people who have wanted to start fights with a big guy and I'd rather laugh it off or call the cops. This changed dramatically when I had my kids. I get very very angry when things get hinky around them. The first real time that it happened I had a woman following me around a grocery store and because she thought I was abusing my son she waited until I was crouching to get something off the bottom shelf to try and touch him. I can't think of a time I've ever shoved someone harder and just the blind rage and absolute knowledge that had she gotten back up I would have tried to kill her. I had another issue with a father at a park who had a kid that was 4 years older than mine. The kids was pushing, shoving and hitting my kid. I tried talking to the father and he let me know that it's what boys did. So I slammed him on the ground. Yes, twice. The first time was back when I was a 16 year old punk. I carried a knife. Just for, well, making my friends think I was tough or something. I was soooo goddamn sure I'd never use it. Well, I was confronted by two guys who wanted to mug me. I carried less than $7 in my wallet, nothing else of value on me, and these guys weren't really threatening me to begin with. But I got angry and ended up stabbing one of them in the face. Frick me, it's been 20 years and it still gives me the creeps. Second time was when I got seriously injured in a suicide attempt. I always thought it'd freak out if would be crippled but nothing like that. Just acceptance and mature grief. I think that I've compartmentalized my emotions so successfully that I don't properly feel anymore. Several much loved family members died in the last few years, for example, and I don't think I really felt anything. This might not make sense but here it goes. I like to think I have really good stress management. Well, I keep it to myself and never crack in the moment. The downside? No. I don't become the Incredible Hulk or any superhuman. 
I just start hoping bad things happen indirectly in my life so I can have a mental breakdown and express it to someone I care about. It's just a really toxic mindset that I wish wouldn't exist, but it doesn't make me act different or try to make bad things happen. Just when they do, I get a secret fricked up relief from it. I have to be strong for a lot of people and I need big events to show them that I'm vulnerable too. Wow here I thought I was the only one I know what you mean. Though I don't like when bad things happen, I have a few friends that I have to help when they feel down and so I don't really show them that side of me. I tend to find myself imagining scenarios where I have to confess my weaknesses to family friends etc. I dated this guy, we'll call him Chuck, for about 2 years on and off. We started dating my junior year of high school. Chuck and I had a lot in common, and a lot of mutual friends. We had fun for the first year or so of us dating before it got serious aka sex was involved. It took a darker turn after that. Chuck was very controlling and jealous of pretty much anyone I talked to. He would accuse me of cheating, lying, and god forbid I had an opinion different from his. I struggled with my self esteem and weight as well as social anxiety in high school and he manipulated my vulnerabilities. Chuck was my first boyfriend, the first guy to ever really pay attention to me that way. I lost a lot of friends and had nothing but him and our circle of friends. When I went off to college different school from him but an hour away only, I broke out of my shell. I made a lot of new friends. My confidence improved and I started running and lost weight. I discovered marijuana and my social anxiety was gone. I was having fun without Chuck and he saw that, and he didn't like that I could exist normally without him. Chuck would show up to my dorm unannounced to make sure I wasn't there with another guy at random times, but he'd bring flowers Taco Bell claiming he just wanted to say hi. Keep in mind, he was at school 60 miles away and this would be at all hours of the day. He started texting my roommate to make sure I was sleeping in my own bed. I would go out to parties on campus and Chuck would somehow show up. My college had a student population of like 30,000 and was huge, yet he could find me at some random apartment. He made fake Facebook accounts claiming to be a kid in my dorm looking to hook up to try to lure me away. All the while, he was hooking up with other girls behind my back. I could go on and on about all of the crap he did but I have already digressed enough from the original question. Needless to say, we broke up eventually. Fast forward 8 years. I live in another state. I am getting married to my soulmate and working my dream job. My fiance and I are extremely well off and about to have a dream wedding. I am awesome and life is peachy. I haven't thought about Chuck in years. When suddenly my phone blows up with texts. About a month ago, Chuck got arrested for child pornography, solicitation of a minor, grooming and abuse of authority. A few old friends forwarded me the news article. An emotion I have never felt before boiled up inside me. I realized in that moment that I freaking hate Chuck. I genuinely hope he gets convicted and goes to prison. I hope he is labeled as a sex offender and lives the rest of his life in shame, working crappy jobs throwing away his career, in law enforcement working with troubled children. I realized if he died, I would not be sad at all. I am sad that I am capable of such strong hatred of another human being. Thanks for the story. Good thing you're away from that scum and onto a better life. My ability to lie to everyone what I am really feeling and go into autopilot in social situations forever is pretty unhealthy. I don't let anyone really know, but I am really different and much more sad than I'll let on. My parents often ask me how they can help me because I'm a mystery to them and they know that they have no idea how I really feel. I had a difficult pregnancy gained a crap ton more weight than I intended and ended up with gestational diabetes I was in pain constantly and was never happy about being pregnant. Flash forward to the day of birth after the placenta was out the first thing I thought of was needing to eat and thank god I had my body back. I didn't want to bond with my newborn daughter I thought she looked like a grumpy old man. Not the most beautiful thing ever. The first 3 months of her life she was what the doctors called colicky. She screamed every night for more than 6 hours straight. No exaggerating. Nothing consoled her. It got on my very last nerve in a way nothing had ever done before. I hated her. Every day I wanted to kill myself. My husband was in the same boat. We both wanted so much to love our daughter but ended up crying along with her instead. We never hurt her. Nor did we want to. But suicide was on our minds every day. 
Even with Zoloft I wasn't able to stop feeling the overwhelming hate. I dealt with a terrible pregnancy just to have a high maintenance baby that I wasn't supposed to be able to conceive to begin with due to PCOS. She wouldn't latch to breastfeed so we were stuck buying formula to supplement while my boobs were attached to her pump for 20 minutes every 2 hours to get my supply up. Everything was so trying, so tiring, so freaking hard. It took a long time even after she stopped screaming 6 plus hours a night to really love her. No one tells you you may not bond with your kid, that they may be super colicky and that you may not fully love your own child for months. People tell you about postpartum depression but they always mention wanting to harm your child first and foremost and I swear I never wanted to kill her, just myself. She's 16 months now and we're expecting number 2. And yes, our last, in June. If he's anything like his sister I'm not even sure what I'll do. Thankfully I have more support this time than last. I'm not sure of when it finally came out, but at times, I freaking hate myself. For absolutely no reason, I just hate myself. It's horrible, and I don't know how to make it stop, especially now that I feel so insignificant. Like I'm literally unimportant to everyone. I guess people have just gotten used to my almost constant self-deprecation, because no one has actually tried to talk about it with me. So, yeah, not really threatening or stressful, just a part of me that gets revealed from time to time. Hey I feel like this too at times. You're not alone. When my stepfather told me it was my fault I was raped among other things, I went into the most intense rage of my life. All I wanted was for it to end which resulted in me wanting to kill myself or him. I remember looking around the garage for things to harm him with and wanted to take a hammer to his knees. I have never felt so angry in my life and it scares me that I am capable of such feelings. Anyone who does something like that deserves worse than a hammer. Yes, and it made me change many things about my life, my coping mechanisms, my beliefs, my personality, so many things. That's what self-improvement is. By the way, it's not mindless navel-gazing. It's looking at the flaws in your character and trying to discover ways to fix them. Only narcissists or the mentally ill look at their flaws and think, I'm wonderful and special and world, you should love me just the way I am. Humility is the beginning of wisdom. Not humiliation, but humility. When I was living away from home for college, all was going well for the first two months. I kind of surprised myself with how disciplined I stayed throughout that time in keeping up with my studies, staying physically active and fit, and even taking care of one of my roommates when he was having issues with his girlfriend and not eating much by making food for him. Then one day I stayed up all night to play video games on the Xbox 360. What happened the morning after was that my mind started imagining all the harsh words my dad would use on me if he were here and witnessed this. She I am you. You are 20 years old and you're still wasting your life away. You're pathetic. When I was your age I was already doing. Insert convenient example to prove fatherly superiority here. Every time I found out what my grades were after an exam since then, the more depressed I got even though they were usually decent. But in my perspective, it was a failure mostly because of feeling not good enough as a result. My academic performance started deteriorating ever since the Xbox binge and it did so rapidly in the second semester. I was skipping classes, playing and wasting money on morgues all day, watching pee, and generally being a waste of space. I eventually dropped out of that school a year later after spending many more hours of trying and failing again. To this day, I am quite disturbed at my anorexic-like disorder on a skewed ideal of academic perfection that was instilled in me throughout my younger years. Yes I am Asian. I used to, when angered, get dangerously violent. I would tear apart my cheeks by biting down hard on them, chew on my lips, tear my skin off, and eventually get a panic attack. I always inverted those feelings and directed them at myself, however, I've punched walls, cut my wrists, not to look cool, but because I had to do something to cool down, broken my nails, torn my hair, cut my stomach, and so on. After some therapy and discovering better methods to cope, namely writing and martial arts, I come to think back to those times. What if it was directed at a different person? I nearly killed myself because I got so moody. I've broken walls and doors. Although it did lead Otta into bad anxiety, 
to the point I can't be around certain people at all. I'm happy I didn't hurt anyone. Scary to think how little self control I had then. It's great that you were able to overcome those problems. I have anxiety as well, though not as severe as your sounds, and I know how it feels like the world is suffocating you at times. This is happening to my husband and I now, his 13 year old daughter, whom I've helped raise since she was 5, just came out as transgender. He and I are both very supportive of the LGBT community, and have been very outspoken about human rights, inclusion, etc. Imagine our surprise, when our first thought was it's just a phase, literally, the most dismissive, disrespectful reaction to such news. Thankfully, this feeling was only shared with each other, and not her, him. We are working through it, and are supportive, but, as a parent, until you are put into that situation, you cannot predict what your instinctive reaction will be. Just today, I've gone through a range of emotions that I can't even wrap my head around. It's surreal. It might be just a phase, or it might not be. It is completely reasonable to think it is just a phase. It is only bad if you try to force him her into something he she doesn't want. I have problems with anxiety and depression. When I'm at my worst, I've found that I get really strong feelings of hatred and bitterness towards people whom I have no real reason to hate. I know these feelings are just manifestations of my own insecurity but they can still be pretty dang strong. Me too, especially when it comes to seeing people happy in relationships, I get more salty than the Dead Sea, since I seem to be incapable of even simple relationships. Probably get buried but anyway, this is an incident I think about almost daily and it happened maybe 7 years ago now maybe more. I was out to dinner with my ex and we were seated outside, it was very peaceful as there was just the two of us and another group. Anyway all our food comes and we're chatting etc and this group of maybe 7 year olds come out to play. They're very loud and annoying but whatevs but then the leader of the group decided he wants to mock me and everything I do. I'd have a sip from my glass and he'd go. Fully retarded voice. Ugh I'm gonna drink some juice now everything I did this crap would do that and it went on for about 5 minutes and I just screamed at this kid hey we're trying to enjoy our freaking food anyway everything went dead silent. The kids looked at me why died for a few seconds before going inside without saying anything. The group of other people outside looked at me disgusted. Instantly regretted and have felt bad ever since. I'm not an angry person and I have never really yelled at anyone. But my god that kid pushed my buttons. I bet you that kid never pulled that crap again. I'm totally fine with what you did. We coddle kids too much in this society. Little shoots need to be told off sometimes to get the point. I used to be incredibly impatient and quick to anger. I had worked on it now and I don't let people get under my skin. I always get worried if I start getting annoyed, because I'm usually a very docile person and generally get over things easily and take life as it comes. But sometimes I've been tired and stressed, where I can feel a deep rage bubbling deep inside me just waiting for my attention to be diverted so it can boil over. I'm genuinely scared what might happen if I ever get truly angry. I used to let the little things bother me, built it up, until one day, when I got the angriest I'd ever been didn't actually do anything, bit flip, that was scary, now I'm similar to yourself, usually peaceful, but if I get annoyed I'm out of there to chill for a while. My sister and I can both usually pick out any number of flaws about someone and bring someone close to tears, multiply that times 10 when we're angry, and that is why I refused to enter a relationship with someone until I was 100% sure I had matured to the point where it wasn't instinct to try to do that. I completely freeze up in confrontational situations. I want to be the woman standing up for another woman being yelled at by her spouse on the train, or tell a person giving a waitress or checkout clerk a hard time to calm down. I want to defuse situational bombs and come back with witty things to shut down confrontations. In reality, I freeze, almost unable to move with fear and dread. It sucks. I also blush with my whole upper body as opposed to just my face. It betrays me, often. Panic and crying when faced with danger stress, rather than a rational response. My house was broken into a few years ago, when I came home to a conspicuously open back door, and a ransacked living room. 
I started to cry and shake, and didn't immediately call the police. Had you asked me the day before what I would do in that situation, that wouldn't have been my guess. My it takes a lot to actually make me mad, and even then there's still a part of me that is aware I'm mad and that I want to hurt someone, but holds me back. I'm always a little scared of that. What's going to happen when that little part of me decides it doesn't want to hold me back anymore? I wanted to stab someone through their neck with a metal meter stick today. I restrained myself, but if he poked my chest one more time, all heck would have broken loose. One time, my dad had shooting arm pain. We thought heart attack but it turned out to be severe muscle strain, and we were about to head to the hospital, and he kept wincing in pain and needed help doing stuff. For whatever reason I responded to the situation by acting super crappy and angry towards him. He asked me to tie his shoes and as I was, he softly moaned in pain and I essentially told him to be quiet and stop complaining. I've never ever been crappy to my father, and suddenly when he actually needed me I became crazy hateful, very unsettling. Every single time someone pisses me off, I think about just beating the ever loving frick out of them with anything that is at hand. It almost goes past the realm of intrusive thoughts, I just think about it for, like... 10 minutes at a time, I have yet to actually do anything, but I think seriously about it every time. The neighborhood bully tries to play with my kids a lot, since we live next door. I don't like the kid and I've threatened to forbid him from playing with my kids ever again after a few put downs and temper tantrums, but my kids don't put up with it and his little cousin is my daughter's best friend, so I never followed through, but he wasn't allowed in my house or to play with their stuff. Then one day I'm at the computer and hear from the other side of the house yelling and crashing. I run out to my garage and the little crap is inside holding the door closed slamming everything within reach into it and his fists too. My son is yelling at him to let her in and I hear my daughter yelling that from the other side of the door. Which about now she forces open. He tried to hold it closed and punch it a few times, but she's apparently stronger. So he pulls back his fist to punch her aiming straight for her face. I'm already there and have swung the little crap by the fist he's throwing into the wall and choke hold him up against it. I was going to beat the ever loving heck out of this 9 year old and he knew it. Instead, I forced myself to look him in the eyes and just say run as I dropped him on his butt. He is now forbidden to even look in their general direction lest my rage return and I'm unable to resist literally ripping his limbs off. No one hurts my children and no forgiveness will ever be given for the attempt. But dang. As a victim of child abuse and bullying, and an advocate against any harm to any child, I never thought I'd be willing to straight up beat one to death without a second thought. Dang the consequences. TL. DR. Was gonna kill my kid's bully. 9 yo. And no guilt over it. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.